Because of you, O oh God, we are here. Because of you, O oh God, we are here to worship you. Because of you, O oh God, we are standing on our feet against all odds. Because of you, O oh God, we traveled and we came back safe. Because of you, O oh God, we are not on hospital admission. Because of you, even against the doctor's diagnosis. Because of you. Because our Redeemer liveth, we shall see tomorrow. Amen. Lord, we thank you. We give you praise. In Jesus' name we are worshiping. Welcome, somebody, by this time. Amen. Give them a high five. You are welcome in Jesus' name. The Lord is good. It's the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. The Bible says, shouts of rejoicing shall not cease in the tabernacle of the righteous. Even as we have gathered here this morning to rejoice, shouts of joy will not cease in our houses. In the name of Jesus. We want to welcome everyone worshiping with us. Some for the first time. Some have been here before and they are visiting our friends, our families. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for them. It's so wonderful to see everyone. Hallelujah. We are the chosen generation. Fourth let's do show in success. All I require for life is God.
a new creation. Hallelujah. So your identity is in who? Christ. Praise God. Hallelujah. Are, we, are they ready? Okay. The young shall grow. You can see all the motivation. Because it takes, it takes faith for you to do a presentation when you are not prepared. That's what is happening. If you think it's easy to come and see, I will call you to come and see. You will see. Some people get to the map, but they just suddenly forget what they have to say. Say, God help me. <laughs> Amen. Let's clap for the children. Come on. Sister Victoria, Sister Inkechi, Brother Abraham, and then one will soon come now. That's Brother Victor. And of course, our Sister Jenny. Let's clap for them. Hallelujah. Don't stop clapping until they finish.
Hallelujah. Make that your harness prayer that God will make your heart a hope for Him. Hallelujah. It's not every heart that hope God. You see? Some hearts, God will not be there. Why? Because said to be pure. All things are pure. So blessed are those that are pure in heart, for they shall see the Lord. I pray that your heart will be pure and God will make it a home. Amen. 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 Thank you. Well, you're welcome in Jesus' name. This is uh, never mind the noise that you are hearing. He said the shout of rejoicing will not cease. In the tabernacle of the righteous. So we have noise, we have children that are here, they will make noise. And it's well, where else do they make noise? Huh? Noise is a sign of life, isn't it? Uh -huh. So that's it. So make it, especially who is making noise, the celebrant. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. The Lord bless you. Well, I, I rejoice with the Adam Moody's family, but before we uh, dedicate that uh, child once again to the Lord. Uh, we will take, we we'll hear the message, what the Lord has for us today, very quickly. Hallelujah! You are welcome in Jesus' name. At a church on the rock, you will be taught the word of God. It's a Bible-believing church, and uh, we believe the word of God so much that. Uh, we cannot compromise. Amen. Amen. Jesus said in John, uh, John chapter 8, verse 6, say, 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 you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. It is the truth that you know that makes you free. Amen. The one that you don't know does not make you free. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Talk to somebody. The Lord is here for you. The Lord will meet you at the point of your needs. Amen. Second Corinthians chapter eleven, verse three. Second Corinthians chapter eleven, verse three. It says there. But I fear lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through its subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. I read that again. This is a letter of Paul to the Corinthians. But I fear that he is. I'm not okay with this, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through the subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. In that verse, you see that uh, who is subtle? The serpent. Said through the subtlety of, sap of the serpent, he deceived Eve. There is enough chaos outside Christ. In Christ there is peace and tranquility. To be in Christ is simple because the message that Christ came to give us is a simple message. To be subtle is used to describe someone who is cunning. Someone that, is, that cheats, a trickster. But if you are in Christ Jesus, it is the safest place that you can ever be. Because it's by a simple message that Christ has come to give us. So it is simple enough for you to be without tricks. No gimmicks, we just say the word of God. Easy. Satan is described as the father of lies because he's been lying from the beginning. Let's go to the book of beginnings, Genesis chapter 3, from verse 1, to explain what Apostle Paul was referring to.
find to that the serpent began Eve. Chapter 3, verse 4. Now the serpent, that is the snake, was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God has made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, as God said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. There are five things I want you to know to avoid satanic attack. Satan came to Eve in the form of a serpent. Why not a gorilla? Why not a cat or a dog? Well, he used snake because he says that the snake is more subtle than any beast of the field. You're looking for the, the, the corny or most corny uh, animal, you look at the snake. So Satan came to Eve in the form of a snake. He said, now the serpent was more subtle than any beast. He is honest to me. Hardly to be noticed, but it is there. You see, devil always likes to hide, especially where the children of God are gathering. The enemy also wants to come there. In a subtle way, you know, hardly noticed. Someone who wants to do you or comes as a friend. Is that not subtleness? Verse 4. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. The serpent did not say to the man, You shall not surely die, but came to the woman for obvious reason. When Satan cannot come to the husband, he will try the wife. And if he cannot come to the wife, he will try one of the children. I will not be comfortable with anyone who makes joke out of God's word or make the words of God to be of no significance. So be careful therefore of who takes the word of God lightly. Number one way by which Satan attack people is by deception. What do I say? Deception. Verse 4. And the serpent said unto the woman, you shall not surely die. Have you seen a man that always contradicts what God says? That is the enemy of your destiny. Verse 5. For God does know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and you shall be as gods. Of course, I hear some people say, my eyes are open now, so I can marry anyone I want. In fact, I can even stick with them before marrying them, because my eyes are open. Doesn't that sound familiar? I can do anything I want now. My eyes are open. That is just a disaster about to happen. For God does know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened. Was what did what did blind you? <laughs> See? But your eyes shall be opened. Then we will paint it as if exaggerated more than what you can see. These guys are not blind. So what does it mean? Your eyes shall be opened. Devil always want to trick people. Remember, he's the father of lies. And you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Verse 6. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat. And gave also unto her husband, who is that? And he did it. I've heard people say that uh, it was because uh, Adam was not there. That was why Eve was deceived. But where was Adam at this time? Let's read it again. And did it, and gave also unto her husband, where? With her. And he did it. Be careful of wrong 
influences. Number two way by which Satan attack is by influences, wrong associations. Then I begin to ask myself, number one, devil did not come to Adam, he came to the weaker link. And we know for obvious reason why he did that. Because he knew the answer he would get. But even in the presence of the stronger, this man did not shut out the devil. That means that Adam did not want to upset his wife. He knew clearly what God said, but he failed to stop his wife. This is wrong associations. Remember the scripture says in 1 Corinthians 15 33, it said, Do not be deceived. Evil communications will corrupt good minds. Evil life communication is the lifestyle. Adam, I believe, you will all agree with me, that Adam was in a better position to stop the wife. Wasn't he? But he did it. Because he didn't want to upset. You know, at times we don't want to upset people, so we kept quiet. You know, so that uh, we don't want to spoil their relationship. But I'd rather spoil that relationship than spoiling the relationship with God. What about that? I'd rather lose friendship than losing my commitment to God. I prefer to break associations with friends who always find fault with God. Especially when I tell them what God says I should do. They are the ones that will say, no, 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 don't do that. Are you the pastor? Or are you Mary, the mother of Jesus? Doesn't that sound familiar? That you just told somebody you want to do something for God. And they are the ones standing against you. May God keep those friends away from you. Amen. Hallelujah. The title of today is Simplicity in Christ. Simplicity in Christ. And I've just told you those two areas by which the enemy comes to attack by deception and by wrong associations. The things that God said we should do, it's simple for everyone to do. In that Genesis chapter 3, verse 6, and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, how did she know that it was good for food? The Bible says she saw. She saw with her eyes. So she, she must have made some deductions. She must have reasoned it out. Because she, she has been deceived. You know, that's what happened when the devil succeeds in deceiving anyone. It, it, takes, it, takes, it takes over your thinking, your mind. And that it was pleasant to the eyes <coughs> and a tree to be desired to make one wise. You wonder at times when we tell some people not to smoke. But they just can't give up because it's pleasant to them. She took of the fruit and eat and gave also to her husband with her. And he did eat. And this was how the husband eventually sinned against God. Every one of us will know whether what you are about to do is pleasing to God or not. It's that simple. When you are in Christ. Number three. Another way by which the enemy tries to attack us, not only by deception or by wrong associations, but hopelessness. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 11 to 13. Ephesians chapter 2. Verses 11 to 13. Wherefore, remember that you being in time past Gentiles, the word Gentiles means unbeliever, in the flesh who are called of circumcision 
by that which is called the circumcision. In other words, they distinguish you from those that knew God. They said that you did not know God, so you are uncircumcised. Verse 12, that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenant of promise, having no hope and without God in this world. Can you imagine somebody not having hope in this world? Having no hope and without God in the world. Somebody said some few days ago that a preacher, he knew a couple, another preacher, and that things got so bad there in America, because you know in America everybody knows how to go. So things got so bad that they have to shoot themselves. They were so hopeless. As in Christ said, or as in the scripture said that Christ is the hope of glory. When Christ that is the hope of glory, and we are the custodian of the truth, now become hopeless. How did they get there? That is the lie of the devil. May you not be hopeless. Amen. Only the word of God will not make you hopeless. Just as I'm telling you, simplicity in Christ. Said that in verse 19. Now therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners. How many people are no longer strangers here to the Lord? Let me see your hand. You see, he said, now you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. So God is telling you that where you ought to be. You need to identify with the family of God. Because if you are not, he said those people that are not, they are without hope and without God. One of the reasons why a man can be without hope and without God is no, not having identity with God. It's not enough to go to just a church, but it's enough for your name to be written in the book of life. <laughs> By the way, it's only when your name is written in the book of life that God counts you as one of his own. He says those people that are without hope and without God, they are strangers to the covenants of promise. The reason why you will not die young is because of the covenant of life that says, I will not die, but I shall live to declare the glory of God. So when enemy is coming to say you are going to die, or the doctors that are going to say you are going to die, don't let that death thing come out of your mouth because it's not for you. Amen? Amen. Especially for those that are no longer strangers or aliens from the commonwealth of Israel or strangers to the covenant of promise. Hopelessness, therefore, is one tactic that the enemy used so you are worthless. Can't you see? As old as you are, no one will marry you. As old as you are, you have no, no children. As old as you are, you are going to die penniless. Those are hopeless words, but it's not for you. Amen? Amen? It's not for you. Every one of us that are hearing this word of God, we need not to be hopeless. We need to be hopeful. In, in Colossians chapter 1, Therefore, Colossians chapter 1 it says in verse uh, 23 If you continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, straight ahead you see there is hope where? In the gospel. Every time you open the Bible, don't do it religiously, ask God to speak to you. You'll be amazed. The word of hope that will come out of it. 
He said, don't be moved away. Don't be strained or swayed by the hope that is in the gospel, which you have heard and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven. And that's what I am doing. And that's what the house of all the God will do. To give you hope in a hopeless situation. Verse 27. To whom God will make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you is the what? The hope of glory. The expectation of the glorious presence of God. That is Christ. That is in you. So be hopeful, therefore, in God. Also in Romans chapter 5, Romans chapter 5, it tells us from verse 1, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. That peace is accessible to everyone that is in Christ Jesus. It says that by whom also we have we have access by faith into this grace wherein you stand. Hallelujah. So everyone that is in Christ Jesus is standing in grace upon the grace that Christ has given us. He said, we have this grace. We enter this grace by faith. Verse 3, and not only so, but we glory in tribulations also. It's only the people of hope that will not lose sight of God even in the midst of trials. Because in this world, everyone will be tried. See that there is no money, or there is no job, or there are no fruits of the womb. And you've been hearing so many stories or comments from in-laws. God help us from those in-laws, you know? Or things do not go well with the business. Why do you think people commit suicide? Why do you think people come kill themselves? It should not be we that will be, it should not be us that will be killing ourselves because we have hope in Christ. It says there in that verse 3, tribulation also, not only so, but we glory in tribulation also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience. We have to give God time in some things, especially when we are standing upon His promises. Every man can fail you, but God will not fail you. That is why God is God. It takes time, I know, because things have to be put right. God is not a magician. Don't believe them, even the magician, because they have nothing to offer you. Verse 4. And patience, let patience have its way. Through that patience, you become an experienced man or woman. Every one of us here, Paul says, comfort ye with the same comfort that he has comforted us. You see, when you are going through that trial, you are being comforted. When you are going through that lack, you are being comforted. And patience is working in you. Because what can you do without God? If you say you are not going to be patient, then you are going to go fall into the hands of a trickster. But you know where we belong that God is a God of hope. So you wait for him. Talk to someone and say, wait for him. He said, not only will you have patience, but experience. So what you are going through, you are becoming an experienced man or woman. Why? Because when you are totally experienced in that area, and you are confronted by God, God will now know who to send somebody else to when they are going through what you are going through. Hallelujah. <laughs> Whatever you are going through in life is not for you alone. It's for other brothers and sisters that are going through the same thing in the world. So when you have gone through it and you have seen the end of the tunnel, and you have seen the glory at the end of the tunnel, 
So God will now send other people to you to encourage them. Hallelujah. Amen. That's how it works. And then, having that experience, you now have hope. Verse 5. And hope maketh not ashamed. Hallelujah. Amen. When you hope in God, you will not see shame. Amen. I've never seen anyone that hope in God and saw shame. You will not see shame. He goes on to say, because why will you, why will your hope not make you to see shame? Why? Because the love of God is shed abroad in our heart. It takes a man or a woman that love God to hope in God. So that love was shed lavishly in your heart by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto you. Hallelujah. Amen. Be hopeful, therefore, in God. Be expectant in God because He will keep His promises. It does not matter how things appear, you can make them better by hope and faith in God and His Word. Number four, just to tell you that the things of God are simple, things of Christ are simple, but the enemy brings these tools. To make things confusing and chaotic. What's the first thing he brings? Deception. Can come through friends, can come through family members, can come through spouses, can come through anyone, in laws. Number two, what, what else does he bring? Wrong association or wrong influences. And number three, what does he bring? You cannot be hopeless when you have the word of God in you. So that's what I'm telling you because the word of God brings hope. Number four, fear. Somebody once said that fear, each letter, is a mnemonic that represents certain things. It's false evidence appearing real. You mean what the solicitor says is false evidence? You mean what the job says is false evidence? You mean my symptoms in my body is false evidence? You mean what I'm looking in front of me is false evidence? Yes. Because only the word of God is true. Your faith has to be tested. Faith is not tested when things are peaceful. Faith is not tested when you have food on the table. Faith is not tested when people are just, uh, 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 I mean, exalting you. Faith is not tested, you know, when it, you will know faith is being tested when even your friends are the ones that are pointing and kissing finger at you. You know faith is being tested when you want to buy something that you don't have money. You know faith is being tested when you pray for the fruit of the womb. One year, two year, three year, and nothing has happened. A friend of mine, or a friend of an say, a bishop, prayed for people for years. He just called, lay hands on you, you have children. Even if you don't want to, you have twins. But little did we know, at the tenth year, this man of God did not have a child. By that tenth year, God opened the fruit of the womb. Another friend of mine, because of this, I don't want to mention it, I did not know until two weeks ago. It's over 26 years now. And they just had the fruit of the womb. I said, God, you don't know what's happening when people wear suits or wear gowns. And they are pretty. Hallelujah. You don't know what they are crying over in their room. Everyone has to be tested. You have faith in God. And that's what is going to make you think. That's what is going to make you a living testimony. That when you speak, people will know the kind of God you serve. You see, not until the God of this Bible becomes the God in your heart. You don't know what I'm talking about. And that's what I'm pleading with you. The simplicity in Christ. But when you take this word of God for what the word of God is saying, 
you will not be deceived by anyone. God cannot deceive you. God will not deceive you. Because he is not a deceiving God. If you have this word in you, this living word, even when you are in the midst of the wrong things, you will know. How do I know? Say, blessed are those that does not walk in the council rather or be ungodly. Nor sit in the seat of scornful, nor stand in the way of sinners. Psalm 1, verse 1 to 3. Say, for his delight shall be in the law of the Lord that he may take day and night. Say, it shall be like a tree that is planted by what? The rivers of water. And it brings forth fruit in the sea. So you can never, you can never be fruitless when you are in Christ. Yes, it is true, you do not have a child for some time, but there is no parents man or in fact, an infantile woman in the house of God. Amen? Amen. It's God. He will test your faith. Don't you know about Abraham? Was his faith not tested? And the third one is hopelessness, as you have said, you cannot be hopeless. In God. Just remind yourself of God's word. As you remind yourself of God's word, the hope comes back to you. And if you're a man or woman going somewhere, then you must study the word of God regularly to receive the word of God. I said fear is the first one that the enemy uses. And I said the false evidence appear real. In Matthew chapter 14, verse 27 to 30. Are you following me? Matthew chapter 14, verse 27 to 30. I believe by exposing this work of evil, then we be on the lookout. So when it comes, you will know and it puts out the fire quicker. Verse 27. For straight away Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. 29. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water. Many of us don't know, don't quickly remind ourselves that Peter actually walked on water. How quickly people remember you for the wrong reason. You see? They only remember that Peter sank. But what led to the sinking? He walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and began to sink. He cried, saying, Lord, save me. Can you imagine somebody that Jesus was within his vicinity? And yet, he took his focus away from Jesus and he began to sin. So that means that we know the genesis of what brings fear. You just take your eyes away from God. Then fear will come. Somebody once said that in the house of faith, Fear not on the door. And faith went to answer it. Only to discover that there is no one there. Fear and faith cannot stay together. What drives away fear? Fear of what if? What will happen? What if that did not happen? What if I do this one? doesn't happen that way. It's only faith that drives fear away. Fear of what I don't have. Fear of what I see. Fear of what I hear. Because of fear, fear will stop you from doing the will of God. Peter was walking. He walked on the water to go to Jesus at one moment. And at the other moment when he took his focus away from God, fear came. In Matthew chapter 10, Verse 28. Verse 28. The scripture says, 
and fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. But rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. So we are not going to be moved by what doctor says or doctor did not say. We are only going to be moved by the word of God. And verse 29. And are not two sparrows, birds, stole for a father. And one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father. Can you imagine the birds flying and none of them fall down? Who keeps them? God. God will keep you. I said God will keep you. Amen. Don't worry about those things that are not yet happening. Don't worry about those things that need to happen but has not yet happened. Doesn't God know? Doesn't God know? He said, He that formed the earth, can he not see? He that planted the air, doesn't he hear? Be hopeful. Talk to someone and say, Be hopeful. Be hopeful. And look at that verse 29, verse 30. For the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Can you imagine? All the strands of your hair and your body, they are all numbered by God. Even if you shave, God knows the number of the ones, the pores that you have shaved up. Amen? Amen? Can you imagine that? He knows everything. As tiny as it is. Praise God. Amen. Verse 31. Fear ye not therefore, you are of more value. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You are of more value Amen. than the birds. You wake up in the morning, look into the mirror. I am of more value than the birds. Hallelujah. Amen. God is with you. And very quickly, the last tool that the enemy used, which you must not forget to say, is unbelief. What do I say? Unbelief, brothers and sisters, is simply a sin. S I N. It is the absence of faith. Why is it a sin? It is not to believe God for what God says He can do and He will do. Is that not unbelief? That is sin. Because if you say, "How great is our God." Sing with me, how great. When you say great, we are not saying that another God is great. We are talking about the God of heaven and earth is great. That the whole universe cannot contain. Is that not great? Now, if that God is great, He says He will do what He says He will do. And nothing can stop Him. Even the devil knows. So it's just a matter of time. So I need to be hopeful in God. Because patience is a virtue. My faith has to be tested. And patience has to grow up in me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So it is unbelief not to believe God. And we must all admit it at one point or the other. And we look at the circumstances. It's so chaotic. It looks impossible. Have you ever seen a God that makes the impossible possible? He's our God. Look at that. The things which are impossible with men are possible with God. For with God, nothing will be impossible. Jesus said, if you can believe, all things are possible. For him that lives. Do you believe? Let's believe. I am talking to you. Let's believe God. It might look impossible today. It might look difficult. But let's look, let's weigh the word, the word of God to what he says he can do. God has not failed anyone before, and God will not fail you. Amen. I want to believe that scripture that says with God nothing shall be impossible. If it is true that God wants himself that nothing shall be impossible with God, 
What about without growth? Without God, what happened? All things become impossible. Hallelujah. Therefore, watch it. Unbelief is not only in my thinking, but in my ways of life. It's not until I say I don't believe that I know that God knows that you don't believe. Even in the way you carry yourself, God knows. Because He weighs every man's actions, He weighs them all. You can come to church services and still be in unbelief. You know that? Yeah. You know, people can pray and still in unbelief. Unbelief is a mindset. Amen? It's a mindset. In Mark chapter 6, from verse 1 to 2, we are told that Jesus Christ went to his own town. You see? He went to his own town. And verse 2. And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many hearing him were astonished. They began to say, From where does this man have these things? And what wisdom is this which is given to him? That even such mighty works are rough by his hands. Verse 3. This is what they concern themselves with. Say, is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph and of Judah and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us, so you know Jesus Christ, uh, Jesus Christ had sisters. And they were offended at him. Verse 4. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, but in his own country, and among his own king, and his own house. Doesn't this, is it, is it not the same? When you want to talk to somebody in your family, when you want to pray, when you want to do, uh, you want to act in faith, you say, Holy man has come. You see, what kind of word do they call you? You see, or they will call you Mary, the mother of Jesus. And verse 5, and he could there do no mighty works, except say that he laid his hand, that is, except that he laid his hand upon a few folk and healed them. Unbelief is not only a mindset, it is a lifestyle. How wrong to live in a life, to live a life of unbelief. <coughs> How does unbelief set it? Imagine those people trying to match Jesus the new with the Jesus they now see. Is this not the sort of carpenter? That's the Jesus they need. But it's different from the Jesus that is presenting itself now to them. And so they could not, they wanted to match it together. But it's difficult. That's unbelief. They tried to figure it out. How can, how can this be? How will God do it? Don't, don't we do the same thing? How can this be? How can this be? My account is in the red. Can't you see this letter? Jehovah. How can this be? How can this, how can this red letter become black and white? Jehovah. <coughs> how will I get this job? Lord, I failed this exam three times, four times. Lord, how can I do this again? You see? Leave the how can to God. Amen. He will do it. Amen. Amen. Always remember with God, nothing shall be impossible. Unbelief is a sin because it stops the move of God. It could therefore not do mighty works because of their unbelief. God wanted to do mighty work. That's what it means. But it was hindered. It was stopped from doing it. That means that your unbelief can stop God from doing his work. Amen? If you don't believe what God says he will do, and you go about saying things that God did not say, or acting things out in a way that God did not say it, then that can hinder the work of God. May the work of God not be hindered in your life. Amen. God wanted to do mighty works even in what you are going through. And he will do it. And he marveled because of their unbelief. He was surprised. Even Jesus was surprised at people's unbelief. Many a times God wanted to save us, but we did not allow him. Our mind is filled with unbelief. What we think is not the same as what we do. And what we allow people to see is not really what we do behind closed doors. That is unbelief. You might appear as if you believe right now, 
or leaving this church here and go back to your home and then the challenge comes to you, God will remind you of his word. It's now left for you to remember to do it. Because if you still don't do it, then you are in the same category of unbelief. Unbelief, brothers and sisters, is not only sin, a sin and a light a mindset. Unbelief is a thief. It will rob you of God's blessing. Were those people not robbed of the blessings of God because of their unbelief? Jesus Christ was surprised. He marveled at their unbelief because he knew that I wanted to do mighty works, but because of their unbelief, I could not do it. So unbelief is a thief of God's grace. It will rob you of God's blessing. I want you to know today that you are not supposed to live here with unbelief. Having known all these tricks of the devil, you are not supposed to live here without emptying yourself of those tricks. And lastly, Romans chapter 4, verse 20. It says, is target not at the promise of God through unbelief. Have you seen a drunken man? What's his pattern? Standard. See? He cannot pass the straight line test. That's why the police do the straight line for us. It's not when they suspect that you are drunk. See? A drunken man is a staggering man. An unbelief, an un a person with unbelief staggers at God's promises. See? It's there. Is here, is there, is here, is there, is here, is there. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. So unbelief will make you not to have any inheritance in God's promises. It just make you to try your luck. Try this one. Does it work? Try that one. Does it work? Try this one. That doesn't work. And that's not what you're supposed to do. A drunken man staggers here and there. Unbelief man is not straight with God. It's not straight with God. But was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Straight away you see that unbelief is weakness. It's weakness of faith. See? He was strong in faith, giving glory to God. It is simple, therefore, to be in Christ. Life without Christ is chaotically complex. It's only in Christ that you enjoy the same life. And I told you in summary that five areas to avoid in your walk with God. Because God wants to make everything simple for you. The first one is what? Deception. Don't be deceived. Don't deceive yourself. And don't deceive God. The second one is what? Wrong association. Evil communication, evil friendship is just a matter of time. You two will be smoking with them. You two will change your wife. You will change your wife. Yes. A preacher of mine went somewhere to preach in Africa. They use a term which I'm trying to remember now. They were asking that minister, do you have this? Suggesting that you have a girlfriend. <coughs> How can a man of God have a girlfriend? Come to think of it. I have two ladies now that are proposed to me on Facebook. <laughs> you laugh. It's true. I showed my wife. Honestly, they told me, we'll see you online. And uh, if you like this relationship, can you call us? <laughs> you saw me as a man of God, and you are proposing to me. Or oh, sinful, pardon me, sinful work that we have. Influences. And of course, if uh, maybe the, re the reason why they are doing that is because other ministers are doing it. Because they will think that, okay, if I know this bishop doing it, and I this one, Yes, you two can do it. Look at that 
effrontery. Look at that audacity. Of course, I don't reply some people. Someone said I should reply. Why should I reply? If it is you, please don't reply them. Otherwise, you are exchanging details. Please don't <laughs> reply them. Praise God. That's the sinfulness that we have in the world. And number three is what? Hopelessness. You cannot afford to be hopeless. God wants you to be hopeful. Hallelujah. And it's only in God you can be hopeful. The word of God. And number four, fear, fear of what if, if not. Don't let fear, fear is false evidence appearing real. Don't let that affect you. Always look beyond the fear and talk, remember the word of God. Fear is an option. You don't have to take it. See? Somebody said that disappointment is inevitable. But discouragement is an option. You have to choose to be discouraged. And there are so many things around us that hate to discourage us. But don't look at them. Hallelujah. And the last one, unbelief. Unbelief is a thief of God's blessing. Unbelief is a sin. Unbelief is not to believe what God says he can do. Unbelief will rob you of God's blessing. And so, Father, we thank you for your word. The entrance of your word that has given light and understanding to the sinner. Lord, your word has gone forth to everyone not to be deceived, not to be hopeless, to pick their friends and not allow them to pick them, not to join the wrong association, and Lord, to flush out unbelief. Lord, this is the simplicity that is in Christ. Lord, we commit this word into your hands, O God, and the understanding we ask to be given this year. Lord, we pray that what each and everyone has heard in this few minutes, we pray, O God, shall not stand against them in the day of reckoning. They will not fall into the trap of the enemy. Amen. Jesus Christ said, take it. Take it. For many shall be deceived. Lord, let them not be deceived. Amen. Is anybody here this afternoon that doesn't want to be deceived? You have been deceived for many years. Now the truth has reached you. Is there anyone here that even the little you have heard from the word of God, the simplicity that is in Christ, you have seen in totality that Christ is simple and the message of Christ is simple. You will love it and you want to be free from deception. You want to be free from wrong association. You want to be free from sin, unbelief. You want to be free from everything that is that, that, that is attacking your mind, bringing confusion, bringing, bringing darkness into your mind. You want to be free from the powers of evil. Is there anyone here, here in this world, that really wants to say, Preacher, please help me. I've had your word, the word of God. And I think this word of God is talking about me. I want to be free. I want to be saved. I want to give my heart to Jesus. I want Jesus to save me. Is everyone here? If you are here and you want to give your heart to Jesus, if you are here and you have the simplicity that is in Christ and you feel like you are a candidate to it and you want God to help you to write your name down in the book of life, you want to give your heart to Jesus and you want to begin to follow him wholeheartedly. You want to do the simplicity that is in Christ Jesus. Can you stand up on your feet? Anyone that want to give his heart, his heart or her heart to the Lord. And you want God to come into your heart. You want God to walk with you. You, want, you are tired of being 
aliens, aliens to the commonwealth of Israel. You are tired of being strangers, strangers to the covenant of promise. You have been a man without hope. You have been a man without God. You have been a people without God, without hope. And you now know about God. And you now want to live that life of hope. You want to accept that life of hope. Can you stand on your feet if you are here? Anyone? Anyone? Anyone that is hopeless? Anyone that his name is not in the book of life? Anyone that has not yet received this promise that I'm talking about? Anyone that your heart is talking to you? Look at, but don't look at anyone. Just yourself. God is talking to you. Don't live here hopeless. Don't live here without making up your mind to follow God. Lord, we thank you. For anyone that is here and is, not, is afraid because of fear of what people will say. Remember, fear is also a tool that the enemy uses. Fear of what will happen. What if? What if? What will people say? That fear, that fear has trapped you. I want to come out of it and break you free from that spirit of fear. The fear is the torment. I break you free from that fear in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Give you praise. Thank you for your word. Your word of vibration. Thank you, Lord, for the word of freedom. Now we know that the word of God is simple. There is simplicity in Christ Jesus. Lord, let us begin to enjoy that simpleness that is in you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.